Hey, I wanted to talk a little bit today about uh, the idea of the ear, uh, the musical ear, I guess, as opposed to just the, the physical ear. So sometimes when we talk about someone, we'll say they have a good ear, which means usually what it means is that when they're listening to something, they're able to identify it, not just as, oh, I know that piece, but, oh, I know where we are in the piece, I know the melody, I know what notes the, the, the person is singing. And they're able to do that with their ear, which is impressive, really. And usually it's a musician. Um, I say usually because sometimes uh, non-musicians will actually have uh, what we call perfect pitch, um, where they can just hear a note and uh, be able to identify it um, just with their ear. And, uh, good news is, of course, you don't have to have perfect pitch to be a musician, but you can definitely do things to help strengthen your ear. And I think that um, this is sort of what separates um, the, the, the good sort of professional musician, I guess, from um, people who, who aren't there yet, is that we want to work on, on strengthening that, that ear. Um, so uh, the way it works, of course, is that um, music, when we play it, makes a sound, right? So if I take five notes. Okay. Now, if I've never played the piano before and someone says, play these notes for me, I could do it. My fingers are, are capable of doing that. But beforehand, I won't have any idea what that's going to sound. I've never heard music. I've never heard piano before, right? So all I'm doing is playing and then listening or, you know, listening back, so to speak. I'm listening back, uh, which is a skill <laughs> that also uh, good practicers have, um, and saying, well, what, what did I think of that, right? Now, now that I've heard it, Okay, I have an idea of what it sounds like, okay? So now I'm gonna start with the idea. Okay, and then I listen back. So there's really three things happening. There's, uh, there's me audiating, I guess. We call it audiating when we listen in our minds. So audiating, playing, and then listening back, okay? And so a good musician actually does both sides of this equation they know what they want to hear, or they know what they want to play, and they can hear it already, and they, they play it. And of course, they're going to listen back afterward and say, was that what I wanted, right? Okay. So the ear has to be engaged all the time. It's a little bit like when you're driving, right, and you want to be able to accelerate, you need to make sure your clutch is engaged, right? So same idea here. The, the ear is, is really what's driving you, okay? So uh, this will also help a lot when you are, are playing the piano or really in, in any instrument that has technical challenges, right? We get a lot bogged down a lot in the, in the finger movements and, and whatnot in piano. And sometimes we just need to come back to the sound, okay? So um, things you can do, again, to practice uh, working on your ear, the sort of back and forth thing that I did just now, audiate it, play it, right? Replay it in your mind. Okay, another thing you can do, which is really good, go to whatever instrument you are, uh, put some fairly easy sight reading stuff in front of you. I want you to play it, okay, as, as best you can. Um, and I want you to not look down at your hands as much as possible, okay? And what that's gonna do is gonna cause your ear, it's gonna make your ear have to do the, the replay thing a little bit more intensely and say, was that right or not, right? Because I'm not looking down at my hand anymore. Okay, I'm listening, only listening, okay? So you're gonna, that's another, uh, that's a good way to do that. Uh, and finally, um, well actually not finally, second thing you can do is if you are learning a piece, uh, uh, let's say more, more than just sight reading, if you're learning a piece that's long, um, make sure that you've got a tape recorder <laughs> or a recording. If you know that piece really well, you should be able to play it through in your mind, okay, just listening. You don't have to think about the notes or just listen to the sound. Okay, so that's another way to, to practice that. And finally, of course, when you're improvising, um, I always like to say that you want to follow your ear and, and sort of um, do what your ear wants you to do next and make the finger sort of follow you, okay? So think of the ear as kind of the leader and the fingers as the follower. So I'll do a short improv where I'm going to try to kind of uh, do uh, some intense listening, maybe especially to my right hand here and I'll come up with a nice melody for it.
All right. So, um, one of the things that I, I think about a lot of times when I'm improvising is that sometimes I, I have an idea, but something else comes out. <laughs> and at that point, of course, we want to re reuse that, that sort of e evaluating tool and say, okay, well, let me shift in such a way that now that kind of gets incorporated. So uh, it's a little bit way of fixing wrong notes, I guess. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. Um, if you do watch these all the way to the end, uh, go ahead and consider uh, sending me a, gip, a tip just uh, down below in the uh, comment section where, uh, or the description section is my info and I uh, hope you have a great time and I'll be uploading a longer improv here uh, in a little bit.